Hello everybody, this is the 24th lecture of the IELTS. Today we are going to talk about gaps. How to answer the gaps questions. For example, if we have those two exercises about gaps and they are about the same passage. Complete the flowchart below, choose one, no more than one word. Pay attention to this note. They always write it with bold and capitalized letters from the passage for each answer. We have this one, life cycle of salmon. Females lay eggs in gap number one on floor of river or lake where there must be plenty of gap. Young salmon occupy number three gap for up to several years. Process known as gap migration to oceans Return to number five gap of birth. Okay, in such a question, you will find all the answers in one paragraph of the passage. Usually, not always. That means 90 to 95 percent. You find it in one paragraph. And in the gaps, uh, almost 100 percent, you have they come wrong. What well, I mean precisely, they come orderly. That means number one comes before number two, number two comes before number three, and so on. Which means if you couldn't find number one, look for number two, and usually we find number one, number one before number two, and so on. Okay, the other question says complete the table below. Choose no more than two words. That means one or two words. Sometimes we have one word, sometimes we have two words. It's okay because it says two words from the passage for each answer. Effects of engineering projects on salmon. We have the engineering project and we have the purpose, the impact, the outcome. Okay, in such a question, you find each row of the table in one paragraph. Then. You go to the next row, you find it in another, in another paragraph, and so on. For example, gaps 6 and 7, you find them in one paragraph. Gaps 8 and 9 in the following paragraph, mostly. And the last three gaps also, because they are in one row, you find them also in a following paragraph. But this works 90 to 95 percent, not always. Okay, let's come now. Effects on salmon biodiversity. The number of Pacific salmon has declined dramatically, but the loss of genetic diversity may be a bigger problem. Each year, countless salmon migrate from the rivers and streams along the western coasts of Canada and the US to the Pacific Ocean, while at the same time others leave the ocean and return to fresh water to spawn a new generation. This ritual has been going on for many millennia, but more than a, a century ago, the number of salmon returning from the sea began to fall dramatically in the Pacific Northwest. The, de the decline accelerated in the 1970s and by the 1990s the U.S. Endangered Species Act listed 26 kinds of salmon as endangered. In North America, there are five species of Pacific salmon, pink salmon, chum, sockey or sockeye, sorry, coho and chinook. Most of these fish migrate to the sea and they return to fresh water to reproduce. There are also similar uh, similparos. <coughs> they die after spawning once. The life cycle of a typical salmon begins. Okay, now I can see here the life cycle of a typical salmon begins. That means this answers the first question of the gaps. I will finish the uh, this one, the passage, then I will go back to answer. 
Let's go back. The life cycle of a typical salmon begins with females depositing eggs in nests or reds on the gravel bottoms of rivers and lakes. There must be large quantities of gravel for this process to be successful. The young emerge from here and live in fresh water for periods ranging from a few days to several years. Then the juveniles undergo a physiological metapho me uh, metamorphosis called smaltification and head towards the ocean. Once in the sea, the salmon often undertake extensive migrations of thousands of miles while they mature. After anywhere from a few months to a few years, adult salmon return with high fidelity to the river where they were born. There they spawn and, they cy and the cycle begins again. Stream type Chinook spend one or more years in a fresh water before heading to sea. They also undertake extensive offshore voyages and return to their na natal streams during the spring or summer, often holding in a fresh water for several months before spawning. In contrast, ocean type Chinook move out very early in life before they reach one year of age. But once these salmon reach our open water, they do not travel far offshore. They usually spend their entire ocean residence on the continental shelf and return to their natal streams immediately before spawning. Okay, let's go on because salmon typically return to reproduce in the river where they were spawned individual streams and are home to local breeding populations that can have a unique genetic signature and the state of the oceans influence this also salmon react in complex ways to human induced changes to their environment the extensive development of hydropower on the major rivers of the western U.S. has clearly disrupted populations of salmon. Other problems come from the very engineering fixes made to protect these fish from harm. Dams on some rivers are equipped with submersible screens. Okay, if you remember when I started reading the second question of the gaps which starts from number six we have the first one of the engineering objects was submersible screens that means the answer starts in this paragraph from this paragraph okay we will go back to the answers designed to divert migrating juveniles away from turbines unfortunately these measures do not benefit all fish. This screen steers many as 95% of the stream type Chinook around the turbines, but because of idiosyncrasies and in behavior, these measures redirect as few as 15% of ocean type Chinook. One thus expects to see genetic shifts in favor of the stream types. Fish ladders too have drawbacks. Although these devices have helped to bring survival rates for, for mature fish closer to historic levels, dams have sadly altered the, their upstream journey. Rather than swimming against a flowing river, adults now pass through a series of reservoirs punctuated by dams, where this change, this job, sorry, from the turbine can disorient the fish and make it hard for them to find ladders. Such impediments do not kill the fish, but they affect migration rates. Dams may also modify salmon habitat in more subtle ways. An indirect effect of the 
92 meters above the dam on the Snake River provides a dramatic example historically. The Upper Snake River produced some 25,000 to 30,000 Chinook salmon that spawned during the yearly fall. The completion of the dam in the late 1950s not only rendered the vast majority of the habitat inaccessibly, inaccessible, inaccessible, but also led to more extreme water temperatures downstream from the dam. These changes in turn altered the life cycle of the small population of Snake River Chinook that remain to die young. Chinook emerged from the gravel later than they did before the dam was built, and thus they migrate downstream later when temperatures are higher and water levels lower. Now, when we answer these questions, firstly, we read the question quickly, then we read the passage. Once we find a key, we start answering. Now, for example, let's say, life cycle of salmon, females lay eggs in. Let's look for it. The first paragraph, I've read, the first line, I've read it, it has nothing. Then, the first paragraph I read each year, which starts from each year, countless salmon, it has nothing. Then, we start from this paragraph in North America. One, two, three. In the third line, the last two words says, the life cycle of a typical salmon begins with females deposit depositing, which means laying. Eggs in nests or reds. And so in the gap, whether you whether you write nests or you write reds. Then we go on with the gaps on the floor of river or lake where there must be plenty of gap. Let's go back. On the gravel bottoms of rivers and lakes. Gravel bottoms. Gravel. Gravel means small pebbles, plenty of gravel. <coughs> Gap number two. <coughs> Gap number three. Young salmon occupy. Gap for up to several years. Let's go back. Uh, there must be large quantities of a gravel for this process to be successful. The young emerge from here and live. L occupy means live. So the answer will be fresh water. Let's go back. Process known as. Now we go back to the process. For periods ranging from a few days to several years, then the juveniles undergo a physiological metamorphosis. That means a process. Known as means called smaltification. So the answer will be smaltification. The last one return to. Go back to whatever. So, gap of birth. Let's go back here. And head towards the ocean, months in the sea. The salmon often undertake extensive migrations of thousands of miles while they, they mature. After anywhere from a few months to a few years, adult salmon return with high fidelity to the river where they were born. That means here, river. Let, let me repeat the answers. Number one, we said nests, or you may write reds, both are correct. Number two, gravel. Number three, fresh water. Number four, smaltification. And number five here will be river. Okay, now we finished this question. Let's go back to the second question. Second question says, submersible screens. If you remember when we have read this passage, we haven't seen anything related to submersible screens. So we need to look for submersible screens. Here, I still remember here, in this paragraph, I haven't found it. I found it in the extensive development of hydropower. 
okay we said because each row you will find in one paragraph that means six and seven will be in this paragraph let me read the extensive development of hydropower on the major rivers of the western u.s has clearly disrupted populations of salmon other problems come from the very engineering fixes made to protect these fish from harm dams on some rivers are equipped with submersible screens okay so we come to the purpose keep young migration salmon clear of let me look for this answer to divert migrating yes juveniles that means to keep young salmon migrating young migrating salmon because juveniles means young away from turbines so number six here will be turbines let's go to number seven mainly protect mainly unfortunately these measures do not benefit all fish these screens steer as many as 95 percent gap okay sorry uh of the stream type chinook so mainly protect 95 percent is a main thing 90 percent 80 85 70 percent is something a mainly protect here because sometimes they don't give you the precise word they give you a percentage which means mainly gap chinook so the answer will be stream type stream type okay now that's it we found six and seven we move immediately to another paragraph okay we have the engineering object is a gap then the purpose to assist journey then we have the outcome okay fish ladders still have the drawbacks although these devices have helped to bring survival rates for mature fish closer to historic levels helped which means assisted the journey so let's go back what's the engineering object fish ladders too that means the first one was stream type if you uh, sorry i mean was submersible screens that means here we have another engineering object fish ladders number eight will be fish ladders okay we have negative impact on that's number nine let's go on dams have certainly altered their upstream journey rather than swimming against a flowing river adults now pass through a series of reservoirs punctuated by dams where discharge from the turbine can disorient the fish to make it hard for them to find ladders such impediments that means the outcome do not kill the fish but they affect migration rates they don't kill but they affect that means there is a negative affection here a negative effect so the answer will be migration rates negative impact on impact means the effect on okay so it will be migration rates we move immediately to the last drop Last row we have a Brownlee dam and we have the impact fish can't get to normal gap very great changes in gap then we have gap of a snake river chinook changed let's look for the answer let's look for Brownlee dam we find the Brownlee dam in the second line Brownlee dam on the snake river provides a dramatic example historically the upper snake river produced some 25,000 to 30,000 chinook salmon thus spawning during the early fall the completion of the dam in the late 1950s not only rendered rendered means damaged so when they damage something that means it's something bad rendered the, the vast majority of their habitat so the answer in number 10 will be habitat because fish can't get to normal habitat why because it was rendered so the answer is habitat we have a number 11 very great changes in let's go back to the passage to the paragraph but also led to more extreme water temperatures 
very great changes extreme in so the answer will be water temperatures okay we come to number 12 it's related to snake river Chinook. changed now downstream from the dam these changes in turn altered the life cycle of the small population of a snake river Chinook. so it will be life cycle now let me repeat the answers number six will be turbines number seven will be stream type number eight will be fish ladders nine will be migration rates ten habitat eleven water change uh, water temperatures and twelve will be life cycle thanks for watching this lecture wish that you got the benefit of it please if you got the benefit of this lecture just to press the button of subscribe and if you have any questions ask them in the comments if you have any criticism please write them in the comments thank you very much thanks for watching it was mr haidal kasi with you